yes greetings to you wherever you are my name is Samuel Robert Masaka the director of home based medical services television or HBMS TV talking health i want to congratulate you for having taken off time and uh, be on this program as you all know every friday in the evening hours we spare off time to discuss something about our health and uh, this is uh, a health topic discussion that runs every friday and it is always aired at home based medical services television powered by home based medical services international an organization that makes sure that you can live a healthier life while you're at home different from all other topics that we've always discussed with you today we felt it very important that we talk about uh, many issues very many men are suffering out there and this program is sponsored by different bodies for example it is sponsored by the Linovats team it's a team of young and energetic youths who are working very hard to make ends meet then uh, it is also sponsored by Mitiana Institute of Nursing and Midwifery to make sure that people can live a healthier life out there but also it is sponsored by Resto Life Resto Life is an anti-aging formula in form of capsule but natural that is formulated to prevent all complications that come with age and at the end of the day you may find even what we are looking at today that product is very very vital so today we are going to look at erectile dysfunction in men i earlier discussed this in the mid of the week however it was ladies that were more excited and somebody told me men is well being it is the ladies joy so have you ever been there and experienced a scenario where you can't stand an election so that is the general knowledge that we want to discuss for today's talk show a lot will be in and then we will also guide you on how you can live a healthier life as a man so when we look at erectile dysfunction or impotence this is the inability to get and keep an election farm enough for sex there are very many men as i will be showing you statistically who are suffering with this condition and they are not helped and they are dying silently so when uh, they tell father tell us that having election trouble from to time from time to time isn't necessarily a cause of concern at time was even men don't mind about it but they say if erectile dysfunction is an ongoing issue however it can cause stress it can affect your self confidence it can contribute to relationship problems that is if it's ongoing you find yourself you can't even perform at work you find your stress nothing is running around and they're telling us that problems problems getting or keeping an election can also be a sign of an underlying health condition that needs treatment for example diabetes i've interacted with very many people who have diabetes and they've had issues with this and the risk factor for heart disease at times if you have a risk to heart diseases you may find yourself falling a victim of erectile dysfunction and uh, if you if you're concerned about erectile dysfunction talk to your doctor that is the first place even if you feel embarrassed some men tend to fear to air it out but even if you feel embarrassed it is very good you talk to your doctor or your nutritionist sometimes treating an underlying condition is enough to reverse erectile dysfunction you could be sitting on a condition that you've not managed and at the end of the day it also becomes chronic and then the erectile dysfunction comes and it is irreversible in other cases even the medication or other direct treatment might be needed for you to manage this i've seen very many people resorting to using viagra dinafil such drugs that are at, that are time was even addictive i wouldn't advise you before you talk to a doctor or a nutritionist or a specialist and uh, statistically i want to bring it to your notes that it is a man is it is a man thing they tell us that uh, 2.3 million 
men in the UK suffer from erectile dysfunction. We could all think that uh, UK is a developed country where they could manage all these conditions, but they're also victims. And they tell us that one in one in 10 men in the world are thought to suffer from erectile dysfunction. That is statistically. But versus that, I want to bring it to your notes that only 33% of men who suffer from erectile dysfunction seek help and advice about the problem. Very many people die silently. And on the other hand, they tell us that male infertility today accounts for 40 to 50 percent of all infertility issues. And in the same manner, it is thought that erectile dysfunction causes the breakdown of 20 percent of all relationships worldwide. There is no one who is going to sustain this. Even if it is a man, they will shy out of the game. Even if it is a lady, they are not ready to stay with such a man. So basically, when you even look at the prevalence according to age with the erectile dysfunction, eh, you'll see that at the age of 40, 50, 60, 70, everything becomes bigger or becomes more in number, where it is severe, moderate, or mild. But these days, depending on the lifestyles that we are leading and the life we are living, it is even coming as as 20 years, 25, 30 years. Can you imagine? Gone are the days when it is supposed to start at 40, electoral dysfunction. But these days, even at the age of 20, people are already victims. And uh, when you look at electoral dysfunction symptoms, these ones might include, and at times they're very persistent, I don't say once you have them, it is already diagnosis that you have them, but these are some of the symptoms. They are not signs that somebody will see, but you who is following, you who is on this channel, you know what is happening in your life, especially if you are a man. If your wife, you know how the husband is behaving, that uh, at times uh, there is trouble getting an election. You fight very hard to the extent that even you want to look into the trouser and ask what is happening to the man is not standing and all that. Then the other one is trouble keeping an election. There are those who will go an extra mile and elect, but they can't keep it long enough. Then the other one is reduced sexual desire. At times it is in the name of busy, 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 busy. Men tend to keep looking for money, money, money. And at the end of the day, they do not have to show you that they do not have the desire for you. But at the end of the day, it is a symptom that somebody could be going through what you call electile dysfunction. And uh, I want to send greetings to all the directors at Home Based Medical Services Television who make sure that such programs can always be in existence to help you live a healthier life. And uh, when to see a doctor, a family doctor is a good place to start when you have electile problems. See your doctor if you have concerns about your elections or you're experiencing other sexual problems such as premature or delayed ejaculation. These are cases that are in the same circle with erectile dysfunction. Then the other one, if uh, you have diabetes, if you have heart diseases or any other health condition that might be linked to erectile dysfunction or your performance. And then the other one, if you have other symptoms along with erectile dysfunction, it is a very, very good time to get to your doctor or your nutritionist. And when we look at the causes of erectile dysfunction, we all know that male sexual arousal is a complex process that involves the brain, it involves the hormones, it involves the emotions, nerves, muscles, and blood vessels. So anything that interferes with that, at the end of the day, you won't find yourself having erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction can result from a problem with any of these. Likewise, stress and mental health concerns can cause or worsen erectile dysfunction. Sometimes a combination of physical and psychological issues causes erectile dysfunction. For instance, a minor physical condition that slows your sexual response might cause anxiety about maintaining an election. And at the end of the day, the resulting anxiety can lead to or worsen the erectile dysfunction or it can affect your performance. And when you look at the physical causes, these are some of them to mention, but a few. Look at heart diseases, and you need to address that as well as possible if you're a victim. Talk about things like clogged blood vessels. Talk about high cholesterol. 
depending on the diet, depending on the way we live our lives. Then talk about high blood pressure, talk about diabetes and obesity. Then the other one is metabolic syndrome. A condition involved, this is a condition is a condition involving increased blood pressure. These days, very many men are victims of high blood pressure. Then talk about high insulin levels, then body fats around the waist and high cholesterol. All these are physical causes of erectile dysfunction. Then talk about Parkinson's disease, very common in drunkards. Then talk about multiple sclerosis, then certain prescribed drugs. The moment you're using drugs day in, day out, even those who go an extra mile to use things like Dinafil, the Viagras and all that. Then tobacco use is also another factor. Talk about uh, the Peyronie disease, development of the scar tissue inside the penis. That is in most cases, if you always get UTIs, you know, tract infections all the time, at the end of the day, ulcers are going to form and the healing process is going to leave a scar and it will result into erectile dysfunction. Then talk about alcoholism and other forms of substance abuse. Then talk about sleep disorders. I've seen this very common in people who change time zones from Europe to Africa. You find yourself even your sexual performance is affected. Then treatment for prostate cancer or enlarged prostate. It also causes erectile dysfunction. Then talk about surgeries or injuries that affect the pelvic area or the spinal cord. Eh? Then the other one is low testosterone hormones eh? in men. All those trigger the election and all that. And then from there, I want us to look at the psychological causes of erectile dysfunction. And these are the most, most common causes. For example, they tell us that the brain plays a key role in triggering the series of physical events that cause an election. For you to elect, it begins from the brain. At times, even starting with feelings of sexual excitement. If you do not have the excitement, if you don't feel like uh, you need a woman, at times you do not want to have that uh, election. And they're telling us that a number of things can interfere with sexual feelings and cause or worsen the erectile dysfunction. And this include depression which is very, very common. You know what is happening these days, either financially or emotionally or what. Even the other one is anxiety. Then talk about other mental health conditions. Then you need to talk about things like stress, relationship problems due to stress. Then the other one is poor communication or other concerns. I want to give you, this is kind of a joke when it comes to poor communication. There is a man who was imprisoned for five years and uh, when he came back and he got home, he went straight back home. And when you got back home, the wife whose concern was, the news said you escaped at 3 p.m. Why is it that you're home at 7 p.m.? Where have you been? Such a poor communication to a man who has been in jail, even if they had a chance to have an election, it may turn them off and they can even run away. Can you imagine? And now, so there are very, very many causes here and there, diabetes, and diseases, I've talked about it, hypertension, stress, anxiety, over age, then talk about poor blood flow, then nerve damage, talk about hormonal issues, talk about psychological and emotional issues, talk about drugs. There are very many causes, but more importantly, anything that affects that system as you see it there, anything that affects the pelvic area, anything is going to affect your election. And at the end of the day, you're going to find yourself falling a victim of erectile dysfunction. Anything that affects anything on your private parts around the pelvic area as a man. So I want to tell you the risk factors are almost the same as the causes. As you get older, elections might take longer to develop and might not be as firm as you used to be. You might need more direct touch to your penis to get and to get and keep an election. And uh, the various risk factors that can contribute to erectile dysfunction include, we've already talked about medical conditions, particularly diabetes and other diseases. Then talk about tobacco. Tobacco, in one or the other, it affects the blood flow, constrains the veins, the arteries. Over time, it becomes chronic and it is dangerous. Then being overweight is also another condition that uh, is uh, putting us at risk of erectile dysfunction. Then talk about certain medical treatment. Then talk about injuries, things like medications, things like uh, psychological conditions, drugs and alcohol use, especially if you're long, a long-term drug user or a heavy drinker. 
at times you're going to find yourself when you cannot perform. And what are the complications? Number one, an unsatisfactory sex life, very disturbing to the men. Then stress and anxiety, embarrassment, all your self-esteem, you don't feel yourself. Then relationship problems. Then talk about inability to get your partner pregnant. If you can't sustain an election, then at the end of the day, you go fine. You cannot impregnate women. All these are complications that come with that. And uh, the prevention is very, very vital. If you're already a victim, you can prevent. If you're not yet a victim, if you're already a victim, you can reverse. If you're not yet there, you can prevent. And when we look at this, they say the best way to prevent erectile dysfunction is to make healthy life choices, lifestyle choices, and to manage any existing health conditions. For example, work with your nutritionist or doctor to manage diabetes, heart diseases, or any chronic con health conditions, because at the end of the day, they are going to affect you. Then talk about to do regular checkups and medical screening. Don't wait when you're on your deathbed to start complaining. Then the other one, stop smoking. That is if you're doing. Limit or avoid alcohol and do not use illegal drugs. Then the other one, exercise regularly, take steps to reduce stress, get help for anxiety, depression, or other mental health concerns. And then the other one, practice weight management. All those are very, very vital. And I want to share with you the role of food supplements. As I earlier told you, this program is sponsored by Ristolife. What does Ristolife do in your body? What does it do? And other supplements. Actually, there is a study that was done, and uh, Dr. Amon say, Dr. Walter Wilt says, is the chairman of uh, the Department of Nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health. He said that a recommendation for dietary supplement should be included as part of a healthy diet. We need to supplement. But what do these supplements do? Number one, they support the body to stay healthy. They are going to give uh, strength to the body to fight different conditions. They are going to fight the body's, the, they are going to balance the body's pH. They are going to help you clear toxins produced during an infection. That is, if you have an infection, they are going to participate in immune system build up. Supplements are going to help you prolong the lifespan of cells that fight diseases. They are going to make the body environment uncomfortable for disease development. More important, they provide active ingredients that neutralize excess sugars in the body, but they also break down accumulated body cholesterol. So if you're out there and you're already a victim of erectile dysfunction and you have issues, you need to address condition by condition. For example, the role of supplement in erectile dysfunction, if you have heart diseases, Vidamax is our sum. We will guide you on how to use it. You'll contact us or you'll contact the person who has sent you this video. You can always talk to us at HBMS TV to know more about your life. Heart diseases, Vidamax it is going to clear all the blood vessels, clogs in the blood vessels, anything, bad cholesterol and everything. Most of it is even an heart cancer. It is going to help you live a healthier life and even address erectile dysfunction. You combine it with C247, complete and coffee. Dosages, you turn back to the person who gave you this video to help you out on how to use. Then clog the blood vessels. Colleges and C247, all these are natural products. Talk about high cholesterol. Colleges is also very vital, C247 and coffee. Then talk about high blood pressure. Uh, Colleges, C247 and coffee. Diabetes, risk of life is very vital. C247 and complete. Then talk about obesity, band slim, colleges and coffee. Body fats around the waist. You cannot perform, you're going to end up having erectile dysfunction. Work on that first, band slim, colleges and coffee. Then the other one is certain prescription, prescription medication, the drugs you're using. Tobacco, do something about it, alcoholism, sleep disorders, prostate cancer, lower testosterone, depression, anxiety, and stress. And I want to advise you that if you're out there and you're using any, any drugs or for your health, you don't need to withdraw from the drugs. You just need to be guided on what you're going to do to live a healthy life. Always these programs run every Friday with different different conditions. The purpose the purposes of starting home-based medical services television is to educate you on how you can live a healthier life alongside using a few food supplements and a few lifestyle changes. I want to say may God bless you and have a blessed weekend. Stay blessed. Home-based medical services TV talking health. <laughs>